Get ready for a manic trip around the world with stops in New York City, Paris, France, and Helsinki, Finland. You'll see it all as we explore Hey Clockface by Elvis Costello, coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name is Kyle, and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. For my money, Elvis Costello is one of the most adventurous musicians of the last 50 years. Who would have expected the bespeckled new wave punk that exploded on the scene in the mid-70s would go on to so masterfully explore so many other musical sounds and genres? His recorded output is never uninteresting and frequently surprising. In fact, following the brilliant retro pop and blue-eyed soul exploration on 2018's Look Now, the last thing I was expecting from Costello was anything akin to what in 2020 he dubbed the Helsinki sound. Earlier this year, we got the first single from what would eventually be announced as his new album. No Flag is a distortion-filled stomp rocker that finds Elvis Costello performing as a one-man band, playing every instrument on the edgy new track. It was a pattern he followed on the subsequent singles, Hedy O'Hara Confidential and We Are All Cowards Now, those songs completing the trio of tracks that makes up the Helsinki recording sessions. I reviewed each single elsewhere on my channel, so for a deeper dive into those tracks, you can watch those reviews linked below. But the TLDR is this. I really like the Helsinki sound a lot even if I wasn't sure if that vibe could sustain across an entire album. As it turns out, it doesn't. That's because, as it turns out, the three Helsinki songs are just one leg of an international travel log of an album, finally announced to be Hey Clockface. The other destinations represented on the album are Paris, which actually accounts for well over half of the album, and New York. The end result is what I'd say is Elvis Costello's most schizophrenic album in his entire discography. Of course, Costello always channels different characters in his songs, but rarely have we seen or heard such wildly divergent sonic portraits within a single song cycle. It is undoubtedly intentional that each of the three cities represented on Hey Clockface would take on a unique tone and texture. Of the three, I remain the most enamored with the trio of Helsinki tracks. While I wouldn't go so far as to say they sound like his early rebellious era, I certainly feel like he's at least tapping into a similar frame of mind. There's an energy and drive to these songs that I feel like we haven't heard from the man in decades. Not that it was missing, he simply hasn't been exploring that sound for a while. For me, it was a refreshing and unexpected turn from an artist that some may have expected to have mellowed in his later years. To that end, perhaps, we have the Paris recordings. During the marathon weekend recording session, Costello cranked out an amazing nine of this album's 14 tracks. In stark contrast to the Helsinki sound, the Paris songs are very much an ensemble affair, featuring a quintet of French musicians on brass, woodwind, cello, and percussion, along with his longtime pianist Steve Naive. For the most part, the music itself is also a stark contrast to the Helsinki tracks. Nearly all the Paris songs are rooted in more of a jazz space with an almost lounge-style performance. I can imagine seeing this music played live in some darkly romantic cafe or bar. I Do, Zula's song, simply begs to soundtrack a smoky barroom scene in a black-and-white movie with its practically weeping instrumentation. Later on, What Is It That I Need That I Don't Already Have?, we get the most Paris-sounding song from the session with a gentle guitar waltz that finds Costello singing with slightly more grit, almost Dylan-esque. Meanwhile, on The Last Confession of Vivian Whip and The Whirlwind, Steve Naive's piano takes center stage. That later song actually sounds a lot like the tracks Costello recorded for the album Painted from Memory with the legendary Burt Backrack in 1998. Maybe it's the flugelhorn that does it. It certainly isn't the backing vocals, though. They're bordering on ELO, which is fine for Jeff Lynne's style of music, but it feels weirdly out of place here. In fact, those same backing vocals are my only gripe about what would otherwise be the most beautiful song on Hey Clockface, the album-closing Byline. At not much over two and a half minutes, this piano ballad is the shortest song on the album, but it still delivers an absolutely gorgeous coda. Yet the lush, layered backing vocals that show up about midway through threaten to derail everything. It feels very cheap to me, and 
all but erases the intimacy of the moment. Now, I've never been to Paris, so I can't say for sure, but I wouldn't expect the ragtime style would be very prominent with both I Can't Say Her Name and the title track, Hey Clockface, How Can You Face Me, Costello's quintet goes all in on that genre. Hey Clockface, in particular, is a curious creature. Elvis adopts a gruffy, affected vocal that makes the song come off a bit like a tribute to Randy Newman, a notion that's reinforced by the song's musical similarities to Newman's well-known Toy Story theme, You've Got a Friend in Me. I can't decide if it's a standout track on the album or if it just stands out. As much as the Paris recordings are night and day different from the Helsinki sound, there's two tracks that almost feel like they bridge the divide. They're Not Laughing at Me Now starts out in the same sonic territory as most of the other Paris tracks, but then come the dirty snare hits and the piano bass notes that feel like souvenirs from Finland. They wake up this otherwise somewhat sleepy song. And on the album opening Revolution No. 49, we actually feel like we're in another country altogether. Paris by way of Morocco, I suppose. It's one of two spoken word tracks on the album. A strange choice to open the album with, but musically it somehow manages to feel like a prelude to No Flag at track two. Speaking of spoken word, that brings us to the final destination on our three city tour. On Radio Is Everything, Costello waxes poetic over a musical soundscape created in partnership with New York-based Michael Leonhardt and Bill Frizzell. The track is mostly ambient, very much in the style of late-era Pink Floyd instrumentals like on their Endless River album. Meanwhile, the trumpet solos that accent the track bear more than a passing resemblance to Round Midnight, which is a little distracting, but wholly forgivable. And once again, bridging the gap between cities, Newspaper Pain manages to combine the New York sound with Helsinki on a darkly Mancini-esque song. I love the retro vibe here, particularly the organ accents and then the fantastic horn arrangement that drives it all home with all the grit and grime of the soundtrack to some 70s private detective movie. One of my favorite moments on the album, for sure. But see, that's the weird thing about the album. It very much feels like it's made up of moments. Earlier, I described the album as being schizophrenic. From song to song, it seems to skip from one personality to another and back again. The way the songs are sequenced, that's kind of inevitable. Each of the three cities highlighted on the album is very unique and different from each other. As we zigzag the globe on the album, I feel a bit like I'm getting whiplash. Just look at the passport stamps for the first half alone. Track one starts in Paris, then Helsinki, back to Paris, New York, Paris, Helsinki, Paris. I mean, wow, can't we just stay in one place for a little while and enjoy the scenery? That's what I loved about the first three singles, all being from one session. If you put those three Helsinki songs back to back on a playlist, they make for a fully cohesive listening experience. Before the album was announced, I even wondered if they were going to be an EP. Now, in the context of the album in full, I think they'd actually be better that way. The same goes for the Paris tracks. If those nine songs had been the entirety of the album, it would have worked perfectly. It would have made complete sense and, again, delivered a perfectly cohesive song cycle. Maybe throw on New York's Radio Is Everything as a companion to Paris's spoken word Revolution number 49, and similarly add NYC's Newspaper Pain to a Helsinki EP. Two releases instead of one, but it would have felt like it all made more sense. Instead, the way the tracks are all thrown together here makes it all feel very slapdash and disorganized. Truthfully, I find the Helsinki stuff to be the strongest tracks, hands down. If this had only been the Paris songs, I'd have liked a track or two, but overall they don't excite me all that much. As for the two New York songs, they're somewhere in the middle. Some people may think it's petty for me to be harping on track order here, but the thing is, this is an album review. I'm here to talk about how this song cycle works as a whole. To that end, I reluctantly have to say, I don't think it works especially well. The whole is not greater than the sum of its parts. Would the album be better if the songs were sequenced and grouped by City? Probably. Would they have been better off as an album and an EP? Again, probably yes. Even still, the songs themselves are more often merely good than either great, as a few are, or just meh, as a few others are. 
So I'm giving Hey Clockface by Elvis Costello an X rating of 6 out of 10. It's a travelogue mixed with multiple personality disorder that's sometimes frustrating, but never less than interesting. Once again, my name is Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.